the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Children, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mothers, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fathers, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, Sister Teresa, for offering prayer. Man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us ask God for forgiveness for from every sin. Let us ask God for mercy today. Amen. Father, Father Lord, God, we have mercy upon for us. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, we pray for your mercy. Of every sin and everything that is not right before you, God, every iniquity, Lord, any day that we, that you we fall in short, Lord, have Father, mercy, O oh God. Us, oh Lord. That you wash us, King of glory. Have mercy. Father, have mercy on our soul this morning. Lord, we pray for your mercy. Let your mercy, we pray oh God. for a washing of the soul and the spirit. Oh, my God, Lord, cleanse us from ruin and purge us from, your from mercy. every unrighteousness, Lord. Pray for your mercy, mighty God. In Jesus' name. Have mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to our Bible, Psalm 95, verse 2 through 4 says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Amen. Let us, act, let us thank God for today. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Ishan of days. Thank you, Prince of Peace. Holy Shatamose. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us ask God the Lord to take over the service today. Heavenly Father, take over the service today. Let your presence. Feel this place. Take over the service Father, today. Take over the service, Lord, Lord today. Have your way. Have your way in our midst. Have Lord. your way, Heavenly Father. Over. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us ask God to speak through the children today. Amen. Heavenly Father, speak through Father, the children today. God Almighty. Let your word flow out of them like a river. Let a river flow, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, come upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us thank God for the pastors today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us thank. Wait. Let us pray that the plan of the enemy will not prevail over the service today. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the powers of wicked will not prevail against the service today in the name Hallelujah, of Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
that you will give me the words to say, not the words I want to say. Lord, please let this lesson teach us something good today. Lord, please, Lord, guide us, protect us in this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Our, our um, title will be Becoming the Fulfilled Child. Our central thought is fulfillment in life only comes when we acknowledge Christ as our own and all. So please let us turn to Genesis 18, verse 17 through 19. Can someone please read? Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 18, verses 17 through 19. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Amen. So this is saying that God trusts Abraham that he will lead his family the right way, not the way he wants it to lead. So please let us turn to Proverbs 22, verse 10. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So this is saying that fathers and your mothers train your child so when they grow up, they could do that to their children, and their children will do the same for the examples. Amen. Let's turn to Proverbs 23, verse 13. May someone read. Proverbs 23, verse 13. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. So this is saying that, like, God, do not, um, parents, do not um, discipline your children just, like, because you want to hurt them. Just do it for they don't do it over and over again. For you can teach them that they won't do it again. Let us, please, let us turn to Ephesians 6, verse 1 through 4. Let's see. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children unto wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So this is saying, children, listen to your mother and your father. Because the Bible said if you listen to them, you will live a longer life. Our introduction will be becoming a fulfilled child is the process in the life of a child as he or she grows into maturity, finding fulfillment at each stage of development. The desire of Christian parents is that children will grow in grace 
and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, maximizing the potential to achieve success in life's journey by cultivating the habit of steady and careful hard work while being willing to improve with the help of the parents and uh, other agents of change. Our lesson objectives are to understand what it means to be a fulfilled child, to examine the roles of parents and children in raising a fulfilled child, and to appreciate the blessings of becoming a fulfilled child. The question one, um, what does it mean to become a fulfilled child? Um, please someone read um, question one. Envelops every area of the child's life spiritually, physically, academically, morally, etc. Luke 4, Luke 2 40 says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Spiritual usefulness means a child recognizes the Lordship of Christ and gives him all his or her entire being. When this is genuinely done, all other areas of his or her life will be coordinated by God who will help, who will then help fulfill the purpose of which he or she was created. So this is saying that being a fulfilled child, you you want to have, you want to be a fulfilled child, and you have to be it physically, spiritual, and academically. Um, you um, as, um a fulfilled child. So does anyone have any questions? Okay. Question two. Discuss the role of following and raising the fulfilled child the home. Can someone read? Question two. Amen. The home, Deuteronomy 6, 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. 2 Timothy 3:15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Thank you. God expects that children should know the holy scriptures, which are able to make them wise unto salvation from home. The parents should diligently teach them God's word and make them live in obedience to it. Negligence of this will only make the child have her head knowledge of the Bible, exhibit talents in the church without having genuine salvation. This is why some homes may not be experiencing God's presence today. Parents should make out time with their children to commune with God in prayers and study the word of God. It is the duty of the parents to provide for the physical needs of the children, the church. The church is another important place to model a child for life fulfillment. The church should teach the children the scriptures, which is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Rather than pursue fame, position, power, and money, the church should remain the ground and pillar of truth where people are taught God's ways. As a church, we should bear one another's burdens to oversee the upbringing of all children. By this, we demonstrate the love of God. Thank you. The child, self-discipline, determination, and obedience. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, 
and then thou shalt have good success. Children assert to learn faster by example. If they are sincerely and prayerfully taught at home and followed up by the church, they will develop self-discipline, determination, and obedience to God and become examples to others that have not such a privilege. As they grow, they will learn how to study and obey God's word and serve him all the days of their lives because the scripture says that we should train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The society, Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The child, knowing the blessedness of not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, from the home and the church, will definitely now be carried away, will definitely not be carried away by the negative practices in the society. The school helps in the academics, coupled with the child's spiritual upbringing, will enhance the child's fulfillment. In all these, it is God that would help the fulfillment in the life of a child because without him, we can do nothing. Amen. Thank you. So this is saying that God expects us to know his word and us not to sin and not sit in this um, seat of scornful. Okay, question three. May someone read question three? Oh, any questions? I have a contribution. So, pretty much when the parents are uh, disciplining the children, it's not because we hate you guys. Do you understand that? It's because we want you guys to be better and to do better. So if you go on punishment or if you are on timeout or whatever it is, it's because maybe you didn't do something and your parent is it wants you to do better. This is about being better. As parents, we want all of our children to be better than us. I believe every parent's desire, every good parent's desire is that the children are better trained, better educated, have more wisdom, have more better than the parent. So when you guys get punishment or time out or whatever it is, it's because we love you. You think we want to necessarily do it? Sometimes it hurts us more than it will hurt you guys to put you guys in time out. But it's because we want to see you guys be better than what we can ever imagine for our own selves. So when we do it, it's out of love. It doesn't feel like love at the time, but it's done out of love. Thank you. Question three. How would the following practically guide towards becoming a fulfilled child? Parental influence. Second Timothy 1, 5 and 6. Parents should endeavor to live by example because children follow what they see their parents do at home. God testified about Abraham's faithfulness in the upbringing of his children and household. Timothy admonished by Paul to stir up the gift of God in him by the putting on of my hands and his faith practically influenced by the faith of his mother and grandmother. Let the Christian parents affect their children positively with their lives by having the fear of God and being obedient to his word. 
then the grace of God will keep the children for good. Prayer, James 5, 16 to 17. A child that is prayerfully brought up and taught how to communicate with God regularly, believing that whatever he or she asks the Father in Jesus' name, he will do it. Excuse me, pause for a second. I have some examples. Like One of the examples is Joseph Party because um, we were praying that it wouldn't rain on Joseph Party and the news was saying it was going to rain, but then it was not going to rain on that day. You can Amen. continue. Amen. He will do it. It's bound to be fulfilled. Such child believes that God will bless his efforts with success. For the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Jesus was fulfilled because he prayed regularly and obeyed the Father. The Holy Spirit, John 14, 12, 16, 13, and 14, Acts 1, verses 8. The Holy Spirit is our great teacher. He guides us into all truth. He reveals the deep things of God and sustains God's grace for all that come to God. Fellowship, Amos 3, 3, 1 John 1, 1, 2, 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. A consistent fellowship with one's Father makes him wise in his life's endeavors. God becomes our Father when we are born again, so we fellowship with him, his son, Jesus Christ, and with God's people. A child that experiences genuine fellowship will be fulfilled in life. Amen. Discipline, Proverbs 19, 18, 23, 13, and 14. Discipline is one of the materials used in the process of child's training. Withhold not correction from the child. Discipline should be done in love and the child should be made to understand his or her wrong deed. This is the only way he or she can take correction influence of God's Word. The Word of God has the power and capability to bring, one, to bring one's life into fulfillment. It can guide against sin, which is the major problem of man. It gives wisdom for excellence. It assures us of the abiding presence of God and his power to make us succeed. In fact, every need to make one fulfilled is embedded in the Word of God. A child that reads, meditates, understands, and obeys God's Word will, will experience fulfillment in life. Does anyone have any contributions? parental influence it's the, the children are going to reflect what the parents do at home so if the parents are teaching the children discipline or they're teaching them certain things like not to curse or not to drink or not to smoke but they're doing those things at home they're hypocrites and their children are going to pick up those habits so the parents also have to be disciplined in what they're teaching also a, a parent's responsibility is again the child reflects what the parents do so if you teach your child in the ways of the Lord, and as soon as they wake up and they say, this is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. And you pray with them, and you pray with them 
before they drive or before you go on a trip, before they do a service at night, before they sleep. The time that they're old, the time they're teenagers, they'll, they'll already be trained to do these things so it becomes like second nature to them. So it's, it's very important for the parents to constantly also effectively exercise these things that we're teaching them so that they could teach it to their children and their children and also be able to witness to other people and know how to guide and be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have some examples. Like when we like when we wake up in the morning we pray and then at night we will pray and then before every subject we do in school we will pray. So when we do that when we older we will start doing it to our children. Okay, can someone please read question four? Oh. Question four. What are the blessings in becoming a fulfilled child? John fourteen twelve. Galatians five twenty three. 2 to 23 a fulfilled child will be saved will fear and obey God and be blessed his prayers will be answered and he will prosper in all that he does he brings joy to his parents the church and the society he will spend eternity with Christ amen thank you did anyone have any contribution Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for the children's week today, also for the lesson. Amen. Amen. I believe it's more on the parents. This class is more for the parents. We, the parents, it's what we do. They go out there to represent us. It's how we raise them. They go out there. It's what we do in their presence. They go out there. You know, I work with children by the grace of God. You know how you know when things, how they will talk at home? Because they will act it in the daycare. Everything you do in your house, how you call your husband names, how you call your wife's names, they come there and say it. I hear them. Sometimes I say, no talking about dad and mom here. But the fact is that some of us parents have such a bad behavior that we do it in the presence of the child that the child we call the father stupid. He come and say, my mom calls my dad stupid and my dad is stupid. So we should be very, very careful. I'm not talking about the world, the church. Parents in the church. So we should be very careful. How you tell your husband, shut up. The children come and say it. They say it to themselves and I hear it. Although I will stop them, but guess what? It's what you do, what you do at home. You think nobody is there. Your children are bringing you out. We should be very careful how we talk around our children. They are not that small that you think they don't say things. They talk. And I believe they talk even in schools. That's why you are very, very careful. Respect yourself. If there's misunderstanding between both of you, get in the car, go outside, talk. Find a place where they know that they don't have to get into your business. Amen. Amen. And also, children, listen, you have to be obedient. There's a challenge I have with the kids. When it comes to candy, they love to eat candies. They will eat candies at school and they will cry, beg each other. You must not tell Miss Mary Queen, I'm going to get in trouble. Jesus don't like it. It's not much about Miss Mary Queen. Whenever you have toothache, I'm not going to carry your pain. I'm only going to tell you, it's okay, sorry. So you got to be very obedient. Be careful. Some of you that think you can eat candy, I know when you are eating the candy, I will see you. So stop it. Are we hearing? Yes. Children, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, my teacher gave me candy. Don't eat it. Tell your teacher, Miss Mary Queen said, no candy. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Our daily living application is the family, nation, and the future generation are blessed when the children of today are fulfilled in life. In as much as other areas such as education and family wealth are describable, parents should strive to bring their children to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus so they attract his blessings on the earth and in eternity. May the Lord help us to have fulfilled children. Amen. So our memory verse is Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. One more time. Train up a child in the way of the he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let us stand up for praise and worship. Mm -hmm. 